Hey guys, today is day 14. That means we're reading Matthew chapter 14. This is the halfway point. If after today, after you read this chapter, uh, you've made it halfway, right? So we can do it. We can finish it. Uh, chapter 14 starts out with the death of John the Baptist. And we see at the very beginning, um, kind of saying that John the Baptist is dead. And then he goes on to give the story of how John the Baptist is dead. So we can see it's Herod. This is Herod Antipas. Um, you see that word there, um, tetriarch, that just means less than a king. He's just a ruler of a certain region. Um, but we, we probably kind of have heard the story and know the reason that John the Baptist was arrested um, because he was calling sin, sin, right? Uh, you have this, this king, Herod, um, who uh, illegally divorced his wife and then uh, legally married um, his brother's wife. And so um, during this time, he's preaching against it. He's yelling in it. He's telling that he's a sinner, um, that this is not what God wants. And so as a king, he just gets tired of hearing this. He puts him in jail. But then on his birthday, what happens? We have this lady who has her daughter dance for him, probably a young teenager um, dancing for him, probably provocatively. He loved it. It's so much that he, in his party, he gives her, you can have whatever you want. Uh, and then she runs back to his mom, which is his illegally married wife, um, and says, mom, what should I ask for? Well, mom has already thought about this. She's already worked this out. And she said, tell him you want John the Baptist head on a platter. Uh, this was the same man who was talking about how sinful they were and against the marriage. Um, we see several things, even in uh, verse 4, it says that uh, Herod uh, was like us. He feared the people. He feared what people were saying about him. Um, and so because of his oath, uh, he had to do this. And so he has um, the head of John the Baptist brought um, to his wife at this party. Uh, and the disciples come and get his body and tell Jesus. Well, when Jesus hears this, uh, what happens? He's sad, right? And it says in verse 13 that um, he got in a boat and went to a desolate place by himself. It's not that Jesus was running in fear. Jesus was understanding uh, what was to come, right? John the Baptist, the forerunner of Jesus, is dead. Jesus knows why he came. He knows it's getting closer to God's plan for him to die. The, crucif the crucifixion is getting closer every day, right? So he gets away. He prays. Uh, he meditates and thinks on that. Uh, and, but the crowd caught up with him, right? He tries to run, but the crowd catches up with him. And notice it says that even the crowd comes, it inner, um, kind of bothers him, is around him. Um, but notice it says that he had compassion on them. Even when the crowd um, was trying to uh, get with him and he was trying to get away from them, he still loved him, right? Gives us back to the parables um, yesterday of reading, right? The kingdom of heaven is like someone uh, who finds a treasure and goes and sells everything and comes back and buys that treasure. Jesus truly loved the people. He loves us. He loves the world. Um, so much so that they're there. He's preaching. He's teaching. He's healing. Uh, it becomes nightfall. They don't have enough food. Uh, and so the disciples say, you need to send them away. And Jesus says this line, and I think it goes kind of missed a lot of times. He says, and Jesus said, they need not go away. What a what an example. We should never run away from Jesus for something that we need. Jesus will provide everything that we need. He provided food uh, and, and um, beverage for them that night, but he provides everything for us. And a lot of times I feel that's us, right? We run to Jesus and we're there, but then we realize we need something and we run away to go do things on our own when the whole time we were supposed to sit there at the feet of Jesus and wait for him to provide. But Jesus provides um, through a little boy's um, lunch, uh, a couple fish, some loaves. Uh, John chapter uh, 6 tells us that it was a little boy. Just shows you of really how the Jesus and the disciples traveled, right? They didn't they didn't travel with a caravan with cooks and chefs. Um, they were ultimately like homeless people. They were always waiting on God to provide. Uh, and so it's interesting that disciples were always waiting on Jesus to provide. Um, but when the crowd was there, they didn't want to, they didn't want Jesus to provide for them, right? This just for the disciples, not for them. Just shows you a little humanity there. Um, but what happens, right? They, they go, they break them into parts. Uh, another part of the gospel says they break some up into 50s and 100s, groups of 50s and 100s. 
and everybody has their fill. They eat as much as they want. Golden Corral buffet, man, they do it. But notice it says that, and they took up the 12 baskets full of the broken pieces left over. You know, time and time again, all the way from the Old Testament to the New Testament, um, God doesn't waste. Uh, it just reminds us that God's generous givings uh, shall not go unused or forgotten, right? God sent manna every day um, while they were in the Exodus. And what happened? They weren't supposed to keep it, right? They had to get rid of it. And so um, God's blessings are always there. And we should always be thankful that God always gives more than we want. A lot of times I think we, we celebrate that God gives us, but we forget that God gives us more than we need, right? And he does. And so um, it says there are about 5,000 men. So you add women and children, probably fifteen to 20,000 people. Uh, and the disciples go across the, the uh, Sea of Galilee, Lake of Genseriet. Uh, same same body of water. Jesus comes to them walking at night, once again, showing um, that Jesus is over creation. He, he can do something that is amazing. Um, but what's amazing is we don't know why Peter sees this and he says, Lord, command me. Let me walk on water. And Jesus said, come on. And Peter starts walking on the water. But notice when it says um, he was afraid and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. And it says, immediately, Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him. Jesus walked, uh, Peter was walked out there on faith, but when he, at that moments of doubt, when he saw the wind and waves, when he started to get scared, he started to sink, right? Uh, and even though that he took his eyes off Jesus, he started to sin, he started to get fearful, Jesus didn't. Uh, run away from him. He didn't let him sink. He was there. The same as us, right? He calls us to walk in faith, but when we fell, every time Jesus is there. And then you have verse 33. This is an amazing verse in the book of Matthew. Um, it says, those in the boat worshiped him saying, truly you are the son of God. This is the first time in the book of Matthew, in the 14 chapters that we read, that has so plainly said, Jesus is the Son of God. Now, we'll continue to see this even more and more as Matthew goes out. But remember, Matthew is writing to Jews to help them to understand that Jesus is the Son of God. And this is the first time after these miracles of feeding, after the miracles of healing, after the miracles of creation, of walking on the water. Uh, and so this, this starts to set the story of Matthew bringing this kind of um, climax that Jesus truly is the son of God. Hope this is making sense. I'm so glad we're doing this, guys. You're halfway there. Let's keep it up. We'll see you tomorrow on day 15. God bless.